Canadian midfielder Stefan Stacchio said uh, this is the biggest game for Canada since the World Cup in Qatar. What should be Canada's mindset with all these scenarios that I laid out, knowing that Chile has to win, but if they get a draw, they could get in, and you have this Argentina-Peru game going on. Do you just have to, Atiba, have the mindset that you have to win, or do you get a little protective knowing that you could get in with a draw? You have to have the mindset to go for the win, right? Uh, you got to be smart about it, obviously. You don't want to just go like all guns blazing because you're in a good position at this point. But you can't go into a game just thinking, yeah, we're just going to sit back and defend. I don't think that's in our DNA anymore. You know, we're, we're a team that can play mm. some good football now. Uh, so, yeah. You I hope it's not somewhere at the yeah. back of their minds, though. Right. But also you've got, you, well, you've, it's more likely going to be Max Crapo, whoever's playing in the back line, that they have a mindset of don't concede. You have to have that mindset of, as a defender, as a goalkeeper. I'm sure that'll be the case as well. It's not a negative mindset. It's more, that's more for your own personal pride. In every game you're going out into and you want to play and do your very best, how are goalkeepers measured? How are defenders measured? It's on clean sheets. If you get the clean sheet, everything else is a bonus from there. Then mm. you could get the 1-0 win. You could get maybe a 0-0 a, a tie could get you in anyway. So that's got to be the mindset. Yes, go and win the game. Don't necessarily think of elsewhere. Clean sheet, absolutely, that's got to be the mindset of every one of the Canadian players. Is it concerning for Canada and Canadian fans, the situation with Argentina and Peru, the fact that Argentina's already in, Messi's not playing, they may sit all the starters. We saw this already happen in Euro yeah. uh, with Portugal, yeah. where Georgia beat them after they sat everybody, and it opens the door for a Peru upset, perhaps, there. I think it, it kind of... You can't really focus on what, what's happening in the other game. You know, mm -hmm. you have to be so focused on what you guys have to do as a yeah. team. You know, how you have to go out there and perform uh, the preparation, everything that you guys have been putting into it. Yes. That's the, the, the biggest thing. So whatever happens in the other game is going to happen. But just, just stay focused on what you came here to do and, and get a result no matter what yeah. it takes. It, that, that's, that, that, help, that happens. It happens. They can't deal with that. As I said, it's not in their control that, yes, I agree totally, uh, Atiba, that you just concentrate on what you should be doing. Concentrate on your job. Yes, it's a worry. It's a worry for us, but that can't be a concern for Canada. By the way, if you're looking at those standings and, and saying, hey, how, how is this possible that if Canada draws and Peru wins, oh. they'll be tied when Canada beat Peru? Head-to-head -head is not the first tiebreaker in this tournament, unlike the Euros, which is nuts. It's a whole other story. Yeah. But it's goal differential, which Peru would win uh, over Canada because they gave up two Canada did against Argentina. I was watching the Fox panel. I only watch them when you guys, you and Stephen and Luke, are not on right, okay. at night, okay? Okay, okay? But I was watching the Fox panel yeah. talking about Canada yesterday, and they seemed legitimately shocked that the Canadians were in this position. I don't, mm. I don't think we are, but they did. Do you think this is just a massive opportunity to make a statement the world that, you know, World Cup, I think it was, oh, Canada's there, that's cute. But now, this is a statement. We can get into the quarterfinals in a continental event like this. This is a huge moment for the country, for the boys on the, on the pitch, for everybody involved. This is a chance for them to go out there and really put, you know, the country on the map. You know, as you said, the World Cup was a, it was a big step, but now playing in a big tournament like this, and being able to go out there and get a result and get through to the next round in a major competition yeah. is, it's, it's a massive statement. Do you know, when you played the US, I think it was in Chicago in qualification for the World Cup away from home, and you, you did great to get a result, you created chances. The reaction from the US after that game was, we should have won the game five or six. It was all little old Canada. You've come down here, you've given us a game, okay, when we play you next time, we'll beat you. And then Canada, the next game, did the business in Hamilton. I'm looking at this now to say there is still a shock and maybe um, lack of expectation around Canada. I think Canada are dispelling that myth now. Mm -hmm. It's about we are here, we are ready, we've arrived. And I think this game today will show where Canada can go in the next two years. And maybe it might be a shock to the people down south of us, but it wouldn't be a shock to me. They'll definitely have to play better than they did against Peru. And even the Canadian players are saying winning when they don't have their best game, maybe that is actually a huge psychological boost. As in, imagine what we can do yeah. if we are on our A game. So what has to be different overall for Canada? And could there be any changes to the, the lineup tonight? There's one or two glaring ones we'll be looking at further down the line. It, it has Jacob Schaffelberg with his performances played his way into the team. Uh, I said post game, maybe he's 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 a he's a guy off the bench. He's a guy that can come on and make an impact in the game. But there are certain players I think that's certainly pushing. That's getting in Jesse Marsh's uh, mindset now going forward. I just think honestly, James, I think the one thing that's come out of these games since Jesse Marsh has taken over now. 
the pool has expanded. It's now 17 or 18 players that Jesse Marsh can trust to go out and do a job, whereas maybe prior to that, there might have been 11, 10, 11 players that you'd be looking at that you could seriously trust. That is the big plus, I think, for Jesse Marsh going into this game tonight, that he could pick from one of 15, 16 players and we wouldn't be surprised whoever he puts out there. Yeah, and that's what's changed in this programme right now. Uh, you didn't have that opportunity where you'd have the, you know, the, the options to choose a bunch of different players. Yeah. And now it, it brings that competitiveness in, in every training session that these guys go into. Yeah. And then the performance levels when you're, you're in the games. You, know, mm -hmm. you have to play at a high level, otherwise it's, it's the next man up. So, yeah, it's, it's good competition. It's good for the team. It's, it's, it helps everybody to grow and, and get to where we want to get to as a country. In particular, Jacob Schaffelberg will be really interesting to see if he starts after yeah. two dynamic performances uh, off the bench for Canada. Now, a reminder. Peru, Argentina will be played simultaneously in Miami on TSN+. Plus. Uh, no Messi nursing a minor injury. He probably would have sat anyway. In fact, as I mentioned, Argentina expected to rest many of the starters. Uh, plus, Lionel Scaloni also suspended, as Matthew was talking about, for the match. So, that is a big one for Canada. If Argentina wins or ties Peru, then a draw would be enough to get Canada in.